was invited to perform here by Bobby Thompson, the airshow director. And I accepted. I'm delighted to be one of the performers here at this airshow at Cecil Field. And uh, it is for the benefit of Alan Hanley. Alan Hanley was the lead pilot for the Aeroshell Aerobatic Team. The Aeroshell Aerobatic Team flies four T6s, and they're sponsored by Aeroshell, therefore the name. Uh, unfortunately, Alan Hanley broke his neck last July at home, and uh, we are trying to raise money for him here at this airshow. Well, I've been a glider pilot since I was 17 years old. And that's a long time ago. I started gliding in Hamburg, Germany in 1961. And for most of my gliding career, which I did as a sport, I uh, didn't even think of flying at air shows. However, uh, I started then competing in glider aerobatics in 1977. I lived, I lived already at that time in Canada, in Toronto, Canada. And I went back in 1977 to practice and competed in the uh, second German glider aerobatic championships. Later, I competed again in the in the third and fourth German Glider Aerobatic Championships in 1977, 79, 81. And in 1985, I competed in the first World Champ Championships in Glider Aerobatics, which was held in Austria. So I had a background in Glider Aerobatics, so it seemed to be natural afterwards to show my skills in air shows. What appeals to the audiences at air shows is that my glider performance is very different from all the others. All other acts, they have engines and they make noise, and some of them are very noisy, but that is part of their act, the engine noise. My glider does not have an engine, and it makes no noise whatsoever. Actually, it is not totally silent. If, if I fly slowly, say at 50 miles an hour, I hear only the airflow going at 50 miles an hour over the glider, which is not much noise at all. But when I fly at, say, 110 miles an hour or 120, then it, it becomes quite noisy. And the maximum speed I'm allowed to fly this glider at is 175 miles an hour. And at that speed, actually, if I'm flying at 1,000 feet, you can hear it on the ground. It screams like a jet, but not quite as noisy at all, you know? You hear the whistle, basically. But the spectators appreciate the fact that there's no engine noise uh, with my performance. And then, of course, there are the graceful and elegant lines of the sailplane. It's a very beautiful aircraft. So it is great contrast to all the other acts, my performance. Because a good air show must have variety. And this, this is variety. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year, only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. Well, first of all, I have to plan to leave home on time, you know, so I'm there. And I like to be there at an air show. I like to arrive there by noon on a Thursday before the air show. So it's not that I show up Friday or Saturday. On Thursday then, afternoon, I assemble my glider because I'm traveling with my glider uh, in a trailer. The wings come off and the V-tail come off and all goes into a trailer and I pull it behind my van. So Thursday afternoon, usually, I assemble my glider and then I brief my ground crew. The air show supplies four helpers for me because I could not do it by myself. To move my glider on the ground, it takes uh, people to help, uh, you know, push it and to launch it. And then the four helpers also hold the poles for my inverted ribbon cap attempt. And uh, Friday, occasionally, I get to practice on Friday. And then, of course, uh, Saturday and Sunday, the air show. The aircraft is an H101 Salto. Salto is a German word for somersault. It was made in Germany and uh, it was in fact designed and built by a lady. It is no longer in production. In fact, it has not been in production for many years, this glider. It is made of fiberglass and it is fully aerobatic. It is very well suited for the sport of soaring. That's what the glider pilot normally does. He or she soars. But it is also fully aerobatic and I'm, going to, I'm demonstrating the aerobatic capabilities of this glider. Now this glider is stressed for plus 7 and minus 5G, so I'm allowed to pull as many as plus 7G, in which case I'm seven times as heavy as I'm right now, so I'm getting pushed into the seat seven times my weight. And uh, minus 5, the forces are five times my weight being pushed in the opposite direction. Um, and typically during the airshow performance I'm pulling plus 6G and I push minus 5G. Uh, I'm allowed to fly this glider at a maximum speed of 175 miles an hour. 
And I might be getting up one or twice on, on one or two occasions on a performance close to that speed. I don't really need that speed for any maneuver. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its VTAIL design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. I did it in 1988, my first inverted ribbon cut. Uh, I'm not the one to invent it, because there are many power pilots who are doing it with the motor planes. Uh, so to me, it seemed to be almost natural to, uh, to practice it and do it uh, myself in a glider. You know, the difference is between me with my glider and a power plane, it is far more difficult for me to do. The first challenge I have to overcome is the setup for the maneuver. Without the setup, I would not be able to do the ribbon cut. So what I do is, from about 1,200 feet above ground, I fly into the wind along the shoreline, and I accelerate to about 150, 160 miles an hour. And then I pull the glider into a near vertical climb and do a, do a tail slide. In that tail slide, I do approximately 2,500 feet, sometimes as far as 3,000 feet away from the ribbon. Now, when I come out of the tail slide, I push the glider into inverted flight. If I pulled it out, I would fly even further away from the ribbon. But I push it out, which means I'm flying now back towards the ribbon and I'm inverted. On the other hand, if I did the tail slide too close in, I would be now close to the ribbon, high and fast, and I probably would overfly it. So the first challenge is to fly the tail slide in the right position, you know, doing the setup right. Then, when I'm coming out of the tail slide, I have to align myself with the show line, which in this case here at Cecil Field is the center of the runway. And then I'm looking for the center of the ribbon, which is marked. The stream is hanging down the center of the ribbon. And I aim for the center of the ribbon. Now, it is entirely possible that if everything is perfect, I still miss the ribbon. Because my glider is only about three feet and nine inches high. If I had flown a pit special, which is almost twice as high as my glider, I would get that ribbon almost every time. Because when I miss it, it is, it is really more than two feet. You know, so my glider is not very high either, and the ribbon is, of course, it's a very small target. So even if everything is perfect, I miss that ribbon sometimes. That's one of the difficult things, but look at this beautiful Salto sailplane as Manford Radius comes by. Getting ready to land, the drogue chute in the back comes out to help him slow down, because the glide ratio is such that it really wants to continue to fly. Beautiful music, a beautiful performance, and a beautiful landing. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause.